Greetings, you chaotic meatbags, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to a full playthrough I've wanted to do for quite some time, and now is the perfect time to do it. Today, we are turning every single planet in an entire galaxy into a tomb world, making everything one and turning the galaxy into a tomb itself for our lovely lithoid species. Now, to do this, you could, of course, use the Armageddon Bombardment Stance, which you get from the Purifier species, but that's just not as fun as our new option. Now, it's not to say I won't use Armageddon Barbarment Stance, since we're likely going to go down the route of Become the Crisis, but mostly we're going to be focusing on Relentless Industrialists. Now, what this does is add a special building, the Coordinated Fulfillment Center, which significantly increases alloys and consumer goods on the world, but will slowly turn it into a tomb world. And of course, that's exactly what we want, which means we're going to be able to be incredibly aggressive very early on, and in combination with Masterful Crafters, our economy should really be absolutely fantastic. So I'm really hoping this becomes a very, very powerful build, in addition to a really fun one. Now, I am aware that there are events which have happen later on once you start turning worlds into tomb worlds, which give you more options to turn worlds into tomb worlds, in addition to just the overtime effect of the coordinated fulfillment center. Now, I have stayed mostly in the dark about this. I'm not 100% sure how it works because I don't like being spoiled for that kind of stuff, but apparently it is incredibly fun. Now, for our species, the Glorious Endless, we are, of course, lithoids. We are survivors using the post-apocalyptic origin and most importantly, we are radiotrophic. This means if we are in a tomb world, we get additional population growth, which counters the negative from the coordinated fulfillment centers, and we don't have as much upkeep. Normally, this species would cost both minerals and energy. If you're on a tomb world, it only costs minerals and 50% of what you would normally have for a lithoid, making them incredibly cheap if they're in their beautiful home worlds. Now, how exactly does our empire fit into all of this? Well, the galaxy converters are what was left of a once thriving and beautiful world until the fleshlings went to war with each other, destroying each other over and over again until all that was left was an irradiated wasteland. From this wasteland, our lithoids arose and looking at the ruins, looking at the hatred and the vile actions of the fleshlings, they realized that clearly only lithoids were worth anything. So this species is going to be incredibly aggressive against anything which isn't lithoids and wants to turn every world into a peaceful, beautiful tomb world. They will be aggressive now so that the galaxy can experience a deathly peace once it becomes a tomb. As for our difficulty, we're going with pretty much the standard at this point. Scaling difficulty will be to mid-game, so they get their bonuses very quickly there. And they do have difficulty-adjusted AI modifiers, which makes their tech even more powerful. This will make the AI, if not smarter, a lot more powerful with brute force. And there was actually an update today, which apparently is making the AI more aggressive as well. So absolutely loving that. So that is that. We go into our medium galaxy, which is a lot of worlds. Originally, I was so tempted to go with a small galaxy, but we're going with a medium one. This is going to take a long time, and my sanity will probably fray very quickly. But then, such peaceful tombs. Hey everyone, as is tradition with these full playthroughs, Future Lathrix here. Just here to say that this full playthrough was an absolute joy to record, although it was an immense effort in terms of my attention span and honestly just the time it takes to micromanage and terraform every single world. But I absolutely love this build. I love the Empire, I love the mechanics. Really, really fun. Now, of course, I do need to quickly shill for the video. These full playthroughs can be poison for the YouTube algorithm, although I do love making them, unless there is a decent amount of interaction. Likes and comments is the best way to keep these videos being created and just allow me to record what I really love to record. So thank you all so much for the support these full playthroughs get. It really does mean the world to me. I also have to quickly add that over the next month, I will be moving house. So there may be some delays to pretty much everything on the channel because it is a bit of chaos. Uh, this was sprung on us last second. Our living arrangements kind of had to change and... Yeah, everything's up in the air right now. I will try my best to get videos sorted and scheduled, but there may be some disruptions there, because real life can sometimes be really messy, and being an adult, I wouldn't recommend it, honestly. Really annoying sometimes. And now, back to the past, and to the full playthrough itself. Even now, I'm a, I'm a little bit rushed, can you tell?
And so we begin just under the very galactic core. So honestly, the very start of this is going to be straightforward. We just want to expand incredibly aggressively. At least for the first 10, 20 years, all we're going to focus on is pure alloy production. We have our coordinated fulfillment center, so we're getting plus 20% to both our alloys and our consumer goods. So our home world is going to be, probably forever, just a serious industrial powerhouse. But and then as soon as I can, I will be building these fulfillment centers on every other world, although you do need at least a level 2 of the main building for that, so that's going to take a little while. I do want to go quite heavy into tech, but I don't know how possible that's going to be with how aggressive I want to be. So, we'll just see how things turn out. What a bizarre start. A ruined Dyson Sphere right next to our territory, but then, once we jump over to the next zone... Just a lonely size 25 Gaia world, ready for us to despoil. Colonization as soon as I can, I'll be building everything I can to try and turn this world into a tomb world. This is the opposite of what we love. A Gaia world thriving with life, ready to spring forth intelligence at any moment. That cannot be allowed to happen. So we're going to turn it into one of our factories. We found our first neighbours, and they are a hive mind. Ooh. Oh, they're over there. I thought they were down here. Okay. Well, challenging, but we'll still send a spy. That won't really get much done, but still. Ooh, they're already a rival of someone else. If they go to war, we are instantly capitalising that and going after their capital. We aren't being blocked in quite yet. We're almost being blocked in. We have some marauders over here, and yeah, they, they're there. So we have one direction we can go currently. Our fleets are decent though. All of our alloys so far have been going into upping our fleets because more fleets equals more influence. More influence equals more expansion. More expansion equals more tombs. And one thing I've realized, which is kind of, um, it's going to make this run even more long-winded. I need detox. Detox allows us to turn toxic worlds into habitable worlds and that does count towards the every world possible thing. Yeah. We've just grabbed a primitive world, and to showcase exactly what we're going to be doing with these populations, any non-lithoid life, we're going to be purging under forced labour. This will give us loads of minerals and loads of food. The food obviously isn't particularly useful for us, but we can sell it, so basically it's minerals and energy. Situation log updated. Attacking enemy vessels. Star system charted. All the pop-ups then. But that was it. That was their fleet. They weren't even in position to defend their home system. Oh! They do have a defender in their home system. Anomaly. You know I have never actually attacked one of those. It has the aquatics origin. Um. Okay, I guess grab everything else then. So, the war was nearly pointless. We got one world out of it. Sadly, because it was a hive mind, we couldn't split them into a mini vassal. But at least we have weakened them enough, so we're not under any immediate threat. And weirdly, it seems like most of the galaxy is kind of clustered here on the left, which has gave us plenty of breathing room to expand over here, only eventually wrapping around to the Combine. So we should be okay. These are both fallen empires. It's a pretty safe starter area, which is really good for us, since we just want to expand so, so aggressively. And we can do that without much worry. It also means we can go a bit more into tech, a bit more into unity, build some unification centers, build some research worlds. It should be okay. So overall, I'm happy enough. And eventually, once we have enough force, I will destroy this dragon. I know the dragon can at least defeat 6,000 fleet power because I've had a raid on my world before with the dragon, but I've never attacked it before myself. So, yeah. Weird eel dragon. I'll destroy you later. At this moment, people are really hating on us, and I've just spent all my influence expanding into this territory over here. So we're finally out of influence after a very, very long time. So many worlds, that's going to massively impact our tech. On the upside, I have focused a lot on unity. It's kind of a soft unity push, really, uh, in addition to a lot of economy. So we are now the crisis. Which, to begin with, won't really do all that much, but it will allow us to obliterate other empires. So, one of our 
goal types now is wipe them out. That simply allows us to destroy star bases so they're permanently destroyed, not going to us, not uh, reverting to them after war. It also just allows us to take worlds instantly. Overall, it's a very, very powerful thing, which normally I don't go with, but the choke points in this run so far have been insanely good. There's only really two places to defend, over here and over here. So if we can rush up like this, we cover both of them. I've also now got our second, sorry, our third Civic, and I've gone with Scavengers, just for the fun of it. This allows Debris to not only give us research, but also give us some resource cost back, and occasionally give us free ships. It allows us a bit more momentum. So the partnership is going to be our very first target. We have declared war to safeguard our interests. We have declared war to safeguard our interests. So while I make more and more Corvettes spam in the background, I'm just going to rush up here, try and take this territory very, very quickly, and then find their worlds so we can obliterate them. Now, one thing I could do, which I never really do, but I'm kind of interested in for this particular very cruel run, is we could have livestock and then use the bioreactors to turn the livestock into energy. So, it's quite efficient. You're only losing one-fifth. Yeah, you're only losing five food per 20 energy and that's always gonna be better than selling the food to the market because yeah you're never gonna get that good a right especially if you spam sell it or even if you have a monthly tribe that'll generally force that price down it does fit our empire scheme we really do loathe the organics maybe we'll go with that We'll see. For now, we'll just remove them so it's not all nice and clean for us, but then perhaps the final world will turn into a livestock world. They are trying to go for here. Thankfully, we are close enough we will catch up, especially since they'll have to slow down to destroy the bases. Oh, it looks like they're trying to return. They were trying to regroup together, but sadly, they were caught off guard. Which basically means this war is over. How strong is this? Not strong at all. Okay. Take it that as well. As you can see, what's happening is every time we hit a star base, rather than it becoming claimed, etc., it simply gets obliterated. That is the type of war we're currently going in. It's like a worse version of the Colossus type of war, because I'm not instantly gaining them myself. It's just being utterly destroyed. On the upside, though, this does give us a lot of points towards our Crisis. Okay, it gives us some points anyway. Yeah, destroy star bases, destroy enemy ships. That'll all give us points as we go. Then once we have their worlds and we purge some things, that's when we're going to get loads of points and rapidly ascend that crisis stage. I just about managed to get that ambush off. My reinforcements are also on the way. Those were both about to attack together. The AI was actually doing a really good job of waiting for that then. Thankfully, I managed to see it just before it happened. Yeesh, that would have been horrible. Okay, so on the upside, even more things to scavenge. So far, scavengers has been fantastic. The amount of alloys we're getting from this war is glorious. It's just keeping the whole thing running so smoothly. Building up some Corvette fleets in the background so I can quickly rush them forwards rather than just reinforcing the fleets we already have, because that's what I prefer to do. I prefer whole fleets moving around rather than reinforcements jumping around everywhere. Just my personal preference. Not the smartest thing to do. Wouldn't recommend it, but it's how I play the game. Okay, don't want that. So currently, we do have the others. I'm going to leave them as indentured servitude for now, because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with them. So for now, they'll just work until I've completely took over the Empire and then make a final decision. Yeah, once again, the AI is doing a lot better at waiting for its allies before moving in, just rather than just sending fleets to their end. But it was a little bit too slow. Yeah, with all that combined and the station there, we'll be absolutely fine. And Supremacy is done, which is a big bonus for us. Now, weirdly enough, despite the fact that we're materialist, we have the option of mind over matter before genetic engineering which is really weird because i wanted engineer the evolution this would allow us to have clone vats which would help out massively with our species because they're so, they're very slow growing i also want to give them the new lithoid trait which allows them to essentially have the lithoid version of budding creating their own populations but i could become psychic now 
And that would be great. Because then once we finish the next one, we could try and go for a pact. The Eater of Worlds would be fun. Um, the Instrument of Desire. So many different options. So I don't really know. So we need at least one slot for Detox. Otherwise we can't grab every single world and convert them. I want Master Builders because I want a lot of the other stuff. I would like... You know what? We're actually running out of spaces for things. I am still glad I chose those two, because having so many worlds, minus empire size is great, extra tech speed is really good. Master of Nature is nice, but not necessary. I want one vision, but it's not necessary. Yes, yeah, so I'm so tempted by Mind Over Matter, Transcendence, Detox, and then the two mega structures. Oh, we can grab that right now. Turning our people into psychers. The problem is, our pop growth at the moment is atrocious. And that's because of, well, we're putting down these, which are actively slowing down pop growth. We can completely counter that if we go down the genetic route. I think I should probably wait until the genetic route. Oh, but I really want to become psychic. I think I'll wait. I'm going to try my best to wait. Patience is totally my strong point. Little bit too aggressive there. Lost a lot of my fleets. Had to take out a couple of their fleets on the way. Oh, and we've been backstabbed. Well, that was my own fault. 100%. Far too aggressive. I just saw their capital and just went for it. On the other side, we did get their capital. Or at least we're getting their capital right now. So, kind of worth it, I guess. It's weird with this type of war. I, Even when I go down the crisis route, I never really go with this type of war. But this empire just seems to do really well with it. Once again, I am so glad I went with scavengers for now. Because it is just fueling our war efforts so effectively. We are almost done now, and I have uh, began our rather brutal side project. Welcome to food. Home of food. Our food? <laughs> exactly? Well, calamari. It's these lovely octopus boys. And there are lots of them. Currently, the world is in disarray, but I am producing loads of hollow theatres to increase the amenities. I will... Maybe one day turn us into a Thrall world once we get the tech, but either way, this is what we're doing currently, just trying to get the amenities up so we have some stability here, sending over more of our lovely Endless to deal with that. And yeah, the Endless here will be happy. And we're converting the species into food. All the other worlds have been drained of all their people, and all the other stuff turned off. That's really saved our economy. And then, I, then in some of our worlds, we are producing loads of bioreactors. Bioreactors, like I mentioned before, will turn 100. Sorry, will turn 25 food into 20 energy each. It does take a lot of space, but I don't have enough population currently to deal with all my worlds. My population growth is utterly abysmal with my, with my main species. So this is actually a pretty easy way to make. Easy energy, honestly. I think this is their last world. So that should be it. Let's see, will this end the Empire, or is there another hidden world down south? Nope, that's it. So we have destroyed our first Empire. We're going to expand into this territory, then either attack the Coalition or the Combine, Really, we need to focus a bit more on tech now. To be perfectly honest, our tech is not doing great. We also need a lot more clone vats. So, more minerals, more tech, more clone vats. Those are the three things I'm really after. Everything else seems to be doing quite well. For now, can everyone please get back to the home system? I do want to destroy the hive mind soon. The hive mind actually isn't doing as badly as you might think, by the way. They're keeping up with us in terms of tech and fleet power somehow. Those new bonuses you can give the AI really make them a bit tougher. Meanwhile, are we still grabbing? Yes, we are. Lots and lots of debris. I'll probably swap out scavengers later on, probably for more minerals, honestly. Mining guilds will be better later on, but for this war, it was fantastic. Look at the tomb worlds we found as well. Ah, it was a good time. Oh, hello. Okay, so this is finally one of our worlds turning into a tomb world, I think. I'm really hoping there's a way to speed it up, because it is 75 years into the game, and this is the very first world which is being transformed. Which is our Gaia world as well. Absolutely wonderful.
Our exploitation of Prime has caused significant, perhaps irreversible changes to the world's environment. Industrial pollution has caused significant climate disruption via a runaway greenhouse effect and rampant radioactive leaks have rendered large swathes of the planet uninhabitable by conventional means. The process has now reached a tipping point. Unless we change our ways, which of course we won't, and start mitigating our impact on planetary environments, we will be unable to prevent an outright calamity. Okay, I'm hoping it just turns into a tomb world. We don't lose um, population or buildings and such. An in inhospitable and irradiated world to match the worst of Doomsayer's warnings, characterized by turbulent seas and unbroken, lifeless wastelands. Starts the situation. Environmental deterioration. So we can take no action, launch cleanup efforts, or embrace the change. We will study the process and learn how to safely turn worlds into tomb worlds. There we go. Population growth penalties of our coordinated fulfillment centers will be reduced and corresponding terraforming options will be unlocked. Yes. Okay. So we can just manually terraform things into Gaia, sorry, into, into tomb worlds. That is glorious. Obviously, we embrace the change. And that's going to make our populations far cheaper, because remember, they are radiotrophic. Oh, and also, we now also have incubators, which increase our pop growth when we have new worlds, because we have so many worlds of low populations, that's really lovely. It's completely countering our lithoids status. Also, why do we have so little influence right now? Yeah, why so low? Oh, our power projection is nowhere near as much. Oh, because, yeah, our empire size has really got too much. Hmm. Maybe our livestock isn't worth it. That's a lot of extra size being added. How many populations do we have of that species currently on food? Oh, that's almost 200. That's 200 livestock, which is producing a lot of energy right now, and I'm still upgrading that. And I could start auto-selling the food. In fact, I'm I'm going to do that once I have all of the bioreactors up and running, so I know how much I'm going to be using per month on that. That's... That's a problem, isn't it? I do want more influence than that. Well, we'll see. We also need more navy capacity. We need a lot of stuff. Either way, soon we're going to go to war with Prime, and we're going to be able to bombard them. Then we're going to go to war with the Federation, which is going to be a much harder fight, because although... They have one weak member, they have two strong members, and that's going to be a proper brutal bloodbath. Thankfully, the Combine actually like us. I don't know why, but they do. The environmental damage to Prime is now irreversible. Nothing we do can prevent the spread of radioactive waste across the planet's surface. The response from the populace has been a collective shrug, as they hurry themselves even deeper in their work, trying desperately to hit next month's productivity targets. As well, they should. The transformation is complete. Prime is now a barren, irradiated wasteland. Our researchers have studied the process and promise they will be able to replicate it safely on other worlds, should we see the need. We can now alter our industrialism policy in the policies menu. What is that then? Okay, so we have full steam ahead. Increased output bonuses from our coordinated fulfillment center, so that's pretty awesome. For science, allows us to terraform planets into tomb worlds, reduced habitability penalties from coordinated fulfillment centers, and then clean up, which is obviously something we're never going to touch. So full steam ahead is probably what we want eventually, but for now, we want for science. I don't think I can currently terraform yet. I can't currently terraform worlds I'm inhabiting, but at least that means we can terraform worlds, for instance, like this tundra, into a tomb world. Okay. Wait. Okay, it's going to be a waste of resources, but I need to read that. That costs rare resources as well. Gas and moat. Well, I guess I am flooding it with pollutants. Okay, good to know then. So I definitely want the tech to start turning our own worlds into tomb worlds. Once again, remember that our species only pays half their upkeep if they're on tomb worlds. They also have increased population growth on tomb worlds. Still not as good as Gaia worlds, but of course, that's the whole point of this run. Another world just transformed for free as well. Yeah, it seems like once one goes, they all start popping. I have declared war versus the hive mind. Now, I still don't know how strong that dragon is, so I don't want to fight it with the fleet as well. So I'm just going to go around bombarding everything else they have until they move their fleets out. Then I'll take out their fleets. Star system the dragon will be last. And of course, in the background, I will be reinforcing it, getting ready for it. 
Dragon has no shields, does it? Okay, so I should use energy weapons. I honestly can't remember how strong this is. Is it as strong as Shard? And the others like that? Or is it weaker? I don't know. And I'm not going to risk that. We do now have Bombardment Stance, so we are going to focus mostly... Ooh, yep, they're moving. Lovely. I'm going to focus on obliterating their worlds. Most empires, I will try my best to actually grab the worlds, but things like the Hive Mines and the Machine Worlds, it's going to be a lot easier just to completely remove everything. Actually, am I bombarding something there? Yes, I am. Okay. Continue with the bombardment. This is already a tomb world, but this will also stop them from existing, so you know. Swings and roundabouts. With the rest of the defenses... Oh, okay, the dragon was actually a bit weaker than I expected, so I probably could have attacked a bit earlier. But there we go. With lots of cruisers, lots of corvettes. The dragon has been silenced. Ooh. I didn't think you'd be able to do a parade with this one. Tech progress gained. Artificial dragon scales. We get the dragon tr the dragon slayer trite, one of our leaders, giving us extra sublight speed and ship fire rate. And we have the situation to parade its corpse. Which, of course, we will encourage. Technology secured. That was a bit weaker than I expected. Yeah, I thought that would be a bit stronger. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. You get that from the start of the game. But for some reason, I thought it would be, like, shard level. Maybe stronger. Don't know why. Weird thoughts. As opposed to my normal thoughts I have all the time. Interesting. While carrying home the Sky Dragon's plume, our transportation ship noticed that the hyperlane they travelled through had a second distortion beyond their ship. Initially disregarding this as just an anomaly, it was not apparent until the ship entered the next system that a group of pursuing entities was causing the hyperlane dilation. A clutch of dragon whelps exited into our system in hot pursuit of our transport ship. They must have lain in hiding near the jump point and followed our exit. The dragonlings do not seem to possess the mental faculties of their progenitor, and seem to be aimlessly following us, or, more particularly, the plume. Kill the pests, or fire some warning shots, drive them off. Interesting. This will increase the amount of unity the opportunity will produce, or... The purge of the Sky Dragon Opportunity situation recedes by minus 10. I want them as pets, if possible, to use against other organics. Fire some warning shots. Let's see what happens later with that, then. I'm way too curious about that. Do not mean to move you. Back to what you're doing, please. Oh, but I've already destroyed that station, that habitat, so sure. Everyone gets to bombard the homeworld together. Construction. Though it's actually a little bit too much. We're doing max bombardment damage, so at least one of you should probably move on and go to the next world. It does take a while to bombard these worlds. Landing on worlds is probably a lot faster and probably what we'll do in the future against other empires. I just altered our livestock species and the amount of food they're producing now is just beautiful. 2,000 total food I'm getting here. Because now, oh not you, the other one, there we go. Because now they are nerve stapled, very strong, agrarian, and delicious. I'm already auto-selling 810 food, but now I need to add an extra 500 to that. I mean, it isn't much. We're basically getting minimum prices now because we're selling so much. But it is fantastic. Plus, if we, if we want more worlds to have loads of the... Where are you? Loads of the bioreactors. We could do that now. And honestly, that wouldn't be a dreadful idea. Our population, even with the clone vats, isn't exactly growing quickly. So dedicating some worlds to population growth and energy production via the bioreactors. And then allowing those populations to move naturally to other worlds. Really wouldn't be a bad idea at this point. Still need more tech though. I have upgraded my main species as well. So now we have the brains. And we are also assembling ourselves via crystallization. But even so, only 2k tech with this empire size is pretty bad. It took like four years to even update my species because of how slow it was. Their home world is gone. Which actually begs the question, where are they? Oh, okay, one more world. 
One final world, six more pops. Now, annoyingly, we are actually under attack in our own territory because I kind of forgot about this wormhole over here. Yeah, just took out the fleet which was there. That's fine. So where does this gateway go? Huh, they don't actually have the system. Probably why it took them so long to attack us. So you are just another minion, right? Why are you currently at war with me then? Don't know, you're very weak though. I mean, it could break through and start doing damage. You know what, that's actually going to be our next target now I'm looking at it. So, yeah, until we finish off the hive mind, which admittedly will be quite soon, I'm just going to go there and see if we can destroy the station. Or stations. Technology secure. I don't even think it was their forces which came through. I think it was you, right? Oh, I really should have just destroyed them, apparently. I thought maybe I'd get dragons. Oh, well. Maybe if I was a xenophobe, I'd have got the option to tame them or something. Rather than a xenophobe, like I am. A bright day greeted the packed crowds on food. On food? Why of all the worlds did they go there? We're not the home, my home world. Wow. Uh, the parade's progress has broadcast throughout the Empire to billions of viewers. The Sky Dragon's plume already seems to have become a staple of endless culture, inspiring artists and creators across the galaxy. It's still very annoying. So I get loads of unity, that's great. Extra physics research, but it's all on this world. I mean, I am producing unity here, I guess, but... This is such a rubbish world to have this on. I don't want more districts here, really. Yeesh. Well. At least we got closer to finishing off domination. Oh, it didn't pop up. The hive mind dying didn't pop up. I didn't think we'd still be at war, actually. I thought once I obliterated the empire I declared war on, the war would finish. I mean, it makes sense that the others would potentially want the war to continue, but that's, I mean, yeah, it's great for us. We'll just continue then and keep moving through, though, really, we need to get more efficient at this. Actually, invading worlds is likely the much faster way of doing this. Bombarding is fun, but it takes ages. It's going to be easier to land on the world, manually purge the pops, and then manually terraform the world into a tomb world. We can bombard as we wait for the ground forces and such. But I think that's probably best. Yeah, took all this. Now we can take over there, try and destroy the mandate. Our war exhaustion is dropping so slowly because, of course, we are the crisis and we get modifiers to that. Relentless aggression. We're just now getting the option to do repeatables, and we have to decide where we're going with this. Honestly, clearly, tech is not going to be our strong point. Massive empire, medium to low tech. That's what we are right now, but our resources are fantastic. We're able to overwhelm a lot of our enemies, even if now I am trying to do a bit of a U-turn more into tech. But here's the thing. We've got dragon scale armor. That is so good. It is absurdly good. And our first of the excise weapons is the Particle Lance. So I'm thinking we're going to pretty much... Uh, yeah, we're going to pretty much go completely energy-based for now. We do also have access to Cloud Lightning for once. So with this build, we are going to be really, really, really good versus the Scourge. If we go into Cloud Lightning and Arc Emitter, we'll be okay versus the Unbidden. Kinetic Weapon still beats, even ignoring their shields because of bonuses, but it's a good alternative. And I think Cloud Lightning Arc Emitter is okay versus the Contingency. In fact, I'm fairly certain it is because they have lowish hull. Loads of armor, loads of shield. Or, or at least a decent amount of hull, but then loads of armor and shield. So I think this is a good coverall basis thing. I will be improving armor because our base armor is going to be so insanely good with the dragon scale. And that's going to just be that. And the strike craft give it a bit of a... What do you call it? A bit of a uh, range. 
That's fun. Also, do I... Oh, I just don't have the larger plasma weapons at the moment. Well, for now, we'll just stick with that. In fact, you know what? Let's go with medium. Just go with double plasma accelerator there. That makes us a bit more protected versus some of the enemies. Afterburners are weird with this build. I understand. But I am also using these just to attack basic systems. I'll swap them out later. Yeah, our tech is weird, this run. Really is. Okay, so well there. This time though we actually have our ground forces, so they'll deal with it. We can just move on to the next system, next system, next system. Let's see if we can remove the mandate. Ah. I don't actually have climate restoration yet anyway, but annoyingly, it looks like you can't turn barren worlds directly into tomb worlds. That's going to take a long time, so the second I have the tech, I need to start saving up towards that because there's going to be a lot of barren worlds and a lot of toxic worlds we need to change. Ground invasion force has seized a planet. Goodbye, all of you. I could disable these, but doing this is so much faster and I'm going to go through a lot of worlds. And straight away, begin terraforming. But a far more beautiful way. Now here's something I've never done before. Destroy this. Ugh, we ended up losing lots of little fleets and lots of health to the enemies as they jump through, which is really annoying. But still. Star system charge. Gather together. Yeah, attack the Shroud Witches. Ooh. Well, that's a lot more unity than I thought. In fact, I didn't think I'd get anything, so... Goodbye to the Shroud Witches. Okay, from now on, we destroy everything organic. Because sometimes you'll get bonuses from it. Planet. There goes the mandate as well. It's so weird that it doesn't pop up that you destroyed an empire when you do it this way. Okay, so I just need to connect all of this up to the gateway... Wormhole that is, and this is ours. We're about to get Mega Engineering. Now, I don't know how many Mega Structures I can actually build, because how light we are with it and everything else. Well, not particularly light, we didn't focus on tech. We're slowly moving towards tech now. But we do have this in our borders. So, obviously, I want this activated as soon as I can. It's very expensive, but I want it, and I'm even going to get the Ascension perk to speed it up, because of how much I want that. That basically will guarantee that our economy will never struggle for the rest of the game as soon as it's up and running. I kind of forgot I set all these up at one point earlier. Loads of our worlds just became tombs all at the same time, which was honestly gorgeous to see. Like, plus 500 energy extra, I think? That's fantastic, even if it did apparently catch on my throat then, which is a bit weird. So, it's going to be a really messy fight when we attack the, the sect. This is the main group of the Federation. So, I think what we should do is instead go after Primer. Huh, <laughs> pack to Primer. Anyway, go after this weaker one, declare war, bring into the fold. That way, the enemy can't just take systems from us if it wants to. There are way too many entrances currently into our territory. It would be an utter nightmare and take tens of years to sort out. If we can just quickly overwhelm Prime, and then status quo once we have every system, that will leave them with one world, but all the other systems become a vassal for me, which I can then absorb later. That makes it a lot cleaner. It also means then they're in a truce with us for a while, and we can attack the kingdom because it gives us space there. So I think that's probably the best idea. Take Primer, Get a space to attack the kingdom. All out war with the kingdom, because clearly this is the only way in or out of their territory. Nice and clean. We can grab all that territory and then have other spots to attack the sect. It also gives us time to build up our Dyson Sphere, nice and safely, in addition to everything else. It's just over 10 years, and then we'll have the Dyson Sphere up, which means our economy will just be utterly insane. And honestly, right now, I kind of want to save up for a Science Nexus as well. If we can just about get it in time, that would be great. We have declared war to safeguard our interests. The plan goes ahead. Okay, so we want every single system they have. Every time we grab a system, it will end up in our future minion. Very unlikely, we do actually manage to get achieve war goals. 
to be perfectly honest, it's quite difficult when you're fighting multiple targets like this, so we're likely going to just break up Primer into two empires, one much larger one under our control, and then probably a single or double system under the original owner's control. Uh, back at the base, I have one of my fleets standing guard by the wormhole. I'm also turning this into a citadel properly and then a bastion. I am also trying to make some more battleships because battleships make me happy and they're going to try and defend our territory. Though that's not too necessary. Although the enemy has made some... Okay, it's going to pop up soon. They have made some claims on us. It's mostly over here. Most of this territory here is claimed. A little bit here is claimed. As long as we keep that tiny bit of territory safe... We'll be okay. I'm just going to try and focus completely on Primer and then do hit and runs if they do end up in our territory. Well, they're moving quite slowly against me, so I'm going to take advantage of that and start to bombard their worlds. That should hopefully bring them back on themselves. They are here right now, and they are going to be able to take out the fleets I've currently posted in defense. Unless they both stick together, so there's not really much else I can do there. I'm also now realising I didn't check out this wormhole, because I didn't know it existed until just this moment. So let's deal with that, please. That would be great. They're going to get through and do some damage. I've double-checked the claims. There are actually no claims down here. So them taking this territory, at worst, is going to cause some devastation on my worlds, but that's it. So I can mostly ignore them on the south end of the fights... It's only if they start pushing back up the, up the north section that I have any major problems. I thought this was going to be a lot messier than it is, honestly. I think this is going to be a very clean fight. I think soon enough we'll go, we're going to have our vassal, even if I still don't think I'm going to get the full war goal. It'll be nice if we did, but I doubt it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, so the Coalition and the Combine have just combined their forces to attack me, seeing that I'm already embroiled in a war, so now I'm fighting on every single corner of my galaxy, and I am not getting out of this without some damage. Okay, so after looking at everything, though, the war we're at currently, we're actually very close to getting what we want. Remember, the main reason we're doing this is so we can have a clean shot versus the Kingdom later. The Kingdom is our next most tempting target. They are weaker than the other major groups at the moment. We want to destroy them. The chance of me winning this, I always said, was pretty much nil. That's going to happen. There's no way we're winning this. I'm just making sure we have all of this area here up to this choke point. Then we're going to status quo. The first war, gone, done, dealt with. Then we have the Coalition over here. They only want one system, this system. I yield. I yield. I am not even going to try and defend the very northern tip of my empire over here because it's one system. I don't care. They can have it. The Combine, on the, on the other hand, want this whole section over here. I will not allow that. So it's going to be status quo, bring all our forces together over here, then strike back. They're going to, by then, already have all that area. I still don't have gateway tech. I don't know what's going on there. I'm just not getting the tech for some reason. This is why you need gateway tech, because it's going to take so long to respond. This is going to halt my progress massively. On the upside, this one this one fleet has just been wailing away on this world. It's now less than half of its original population, so at least I'm getting some catharsis. Catharsis? Catharctic. Catharticus. Goodness! First war over. Exactly what I wanted to happen happened. Primer has now been split into two. We now have North Primer, aka Union. Union here is disloyal. It's never going to like us. We don't care. Eventually, we're consuming it. We're very, very mean in that way. If we take a look-see, I think we should have... Why is that not the case? Oppressive vassalage. Okay, I thought that I would move on from that. That's fine. Oh, no integration permitted. Never mind, that is what we wanted. Lovely. Can I force you to have that? We could. But we're not at war with the United Union. Will it take a second just to stop that? Let's try again. We cannot propose... Okay, so 59 months, we can't change that. Then we could start stealing some of its resources. Or, of course, we could start integrating it, which is the end goal. All forces, please get to, yeah, like, like about here-ish. We can use some of the wormholes to get there a little bit faster. Get there, then move down. Ooh. Ooh okay, never mind. We're just going to jump straight into their territory then. I didn't want to go that way because I wanted to get my stuff back first. But you know what? I'm going to just obliterate you instead. 
all get there. Then we're going into their territory and we're just going to destroy everything we see in revenge. Because who needs climbs when you can just obliterate worlds? And my original defense force here can kick these out no problem at all. They're plenty strong enough to deal with all these. Gonna start mixing some corvettes in as well. I didn't really want battleship spam here. What I was hoping was I could do this, attack the kingdom, then my battleship spam could then be ready for the protectors over here. That's not gonna happen just yet. You know, now I think about it, probably should have made a claim here. That way I could have built my own star base here and been a bit more prepared when we attack that. Really? Okay, no, that's just, yeah. Again, I'm ignoring the, the coalition's actions. We're focusing completely on the combine. We can probably force a status quo once we destroy some of their fleets and obliterate some of their worlds. We've reached their capital. I honestly don't know if I'm going to be able to take back all the systems claimed from us. I've been trying to clear up some space, but they've been kind of moving around too much. It's hard to tell exactly who's grabbed what. It's not great right now. I am moving a larger fleet through here. Yeah, I'm losing that right now. But I am still moving a larger fleet through here, which will be able to clear the way again. And meet up with the smaller fleet here. I've made a claim on their homeworld, which means if I'm lucky, it's kind of the best out of a bad situation. If I'm unlucky, I should say, and I lose all of this, this chunk down here, and the bit over there, which again, I've pretty much given up on. At least I can claim their homeworld, which of course is their big powerhouse. And we can remove that completely, which will be great for us. I could also claim the space next to it. Yeah, let's grab both of those. That's already two more, which I love anyway. So grab all that, move out, rendezvous with those. Then we're kind of flanking all of the Combine's forces. Then it's just the Coalition's forces, which are a big deal. I mean, they're not weak by any stretch, but they're very spread out. You've got you've got 20k over there, 20k here, it's like 12k there, 20k there. They're kind of everywhere, which means they're being really annoying grabbing systems, but they're not difficult to remove once my fleet gets there. This is just tying me up too long. That's the main issue here. I want it to be a bit more powerful before the endgame crisis, and this has just locked me in place. Well, with all the other negatives happening, at least now the Dyson Sphere is back online, giving us 4,000 energy a month. Yeah, 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 we know you don't like us. I'm losing quite a lot, but on the upside, my ground forces are... Oh, they're landing already. Cool. Okay, yeah, my ground forces are here, so we're getting some of the territory back. My other groups are now going up to here to defend that little bit of territory we've taken. And I've also got enough to make a claim here. So likely we are going to claim most of this cluster. And we might get away without any loss over here. If we're lucky, honestly. Just keep the fleets together. Try and pick off these other fleets. This one is about to actually, you know what, change-wise, go here instead. That'll pick off that, because these have split. They were all together, that's why they were scary. You know what? I actually now think we're going to be absolutely fine. I think we're going to win. And we could then push for this, which would be really weird. Bring into the fold, which would make the Combine one of ours, and they would actually fight with us, which would make the Coalition very, very nervous. So, lesson of the day. Don't fight against the species which are currently bombarding worlds, turning them into tombs. So at this point, I can status quo at any point, and I'm not really losing anything. Or I could tough it out and control everything, but honestly, I want to come back here and just bombard it and take it over the normal way. So I'm going to take a little bit more, just a tiny bit more, like, for instance, over here. And then when I status quo, I'll also make a tiny vassal from all the territory I've just grabbed. So I'm waiting for my landing forces to go over here to grab this world. I'm waiting until this world is completely conquered, and I want this bit of territory. So that way, the enemy are really backed into a corner. And this single battleship is dealing with some tiny little star bases. We could have just waited a little bit longer, but honestly, it's taking way too long. I really want to attack the Fallen Empire soon, and that does require me to change up my battleships. Currently, with their energy weapons, they're being countered by the Fallen Empire, which just have loads of shields. I'm going to be swapping over to Arc Emitters and Strikecraft, and that's it. Oh, and of course, a little bit of Cloud Lightning. There we go. Isn't it beautiful? A few systems I missed here and there because honestly I didn't have enough time to land forces there, but enough to completely destroy their economy, I'm sure. 
This is all they have left now. This little bit. Ooh, ruined ring world. That's definitely something I really want. Oh, is that where they started? Master Conduit. That may be their origin. Interesting. Oh, we definitely want that later. For now, though, I want all of my forces to move over here. I'm building a small star base, which is going to refit all of my fleets. And then I'm going to go and take over the Fallen Empire for all those lovely extra bonuses. In fact, what I'll probably do is bombard everything except for their homeworld. Because I think if you turn the homeworld into a tomb world without using the terraforming option, I think you just destroy everything. As in the buildings as well. Which obviously isn't what we really want. So a few things have happened, thankfully. We've finally got Ascension Theory, so I've got my last Ascension perk slot here, which we're going to use probably just for Defender of the Galaxy, honestly. I was tempted by Arcology Project, but we just don't really have the time. We're still building the basic mega structures. We're not going to get stuff done in time, so can't really do that. The Arcology Project would go against the theme of the entire run, so yeah, I can't think of anything else I really want. So that is what it is. I mean, World Shaper is tempting because it makes terraforming cheaper, but... The cost isn't really a, a big thing. So with that, that also means now we have loads more influence per month and a little bit more science because we have our ambitions unlocked and we had enough unity for all of that. I'm upgrading my fleets now, getting ready for the push into the Fallen Empire's territory. We're building more fleets over there. And finally, we have gateway tech. So gateways are going to be put down everywhere in the Empire. Also, do you know what's really adorable? The little construction drones for lithoids. Look at the little crystally heads. We have declared war to seek all our interests. And so we've declared war and I safe war rather than wipe them out. We've got claims on the home worlds, and what we're going to do is bombard the other worlds until they become tomb worlds. I'm not going to do that to the main worlds purely because that will also destroy the buildings, which is the main reason you want to attack on the Fallen Empire. Well, that and the tech, but since we're using the armor, honestly, mostly it's just for these. Extra energy, extra alloys, and all that good stuff, and yet even more energy. We want that. Our economy is already ridiculously good. Making it better can only be, well, better. I don't know where their fleets are, though, to be perfectly honest. Oh, they're already at war with the Empire. Oh, that's going to make it even easier. Then we probably won't even have to contend with their fleets, since I don't like pulling back all that much. We currently are using Arc Emitters and Cloud Lightning, which is what we'll probably keep if we fight the Contingency. Essentially, the only crisis I'm not really looking forward to is something like the Unbidden. Oh, we have enough ground forces already. Well, start bombardment on... The second world anyway, since we're going to lose loads of ground forces with that. And then start moving on. And then destroy the other worlds. The first time seeing the enemy fleet. And I've already made every world into a tomb world, except for the world I'm now conquering. Station which operator. won't be too long. Ground so much so. That should be it, right? Yep, achieve war goals auto. Technology. And that is the end of the protectors. Lovely. I do have a couple of science vessels on the way to get the debris, and then I'll also survey all these areas. Now all my forces need to make a quick move just over here. It'll be easier either side's fine. And then we're attacking the other fallen empire, which in this case is the machine empire, so we are going to get a fully functioning ring world out of this, in addition to once again more specialist buildings. Yeah, athletes just hard counter this particular type of enemy. Almost all their points are in shields, uh, the rest is in armor, they have so little hull, and the fact we're going straight to the hull with most of our weapons, they just vanish. Star system charted. Finally clearing up some of the random aliens around our space as well, so that we can start claiming everything. It's time to start building up properly. After this, we're actually going to go to war with the Combine, since I want this station here. I just want to obliterate them, so I'll put my forces on every choke point, and then we'll just do destroy them. Same with the Link, so then all of this will be ours. Then we'll go after either the Kingdom or the Coalition. Then we've got to be worried about the Endgame Crisis, so... Might want to split up my forces and do multiple wars at once, which is something I normally don't do because multitasking is not my strong point. Neither is thinking. Talking isn't great either. Attempting to re-establish connection with drones, fleet units, control hubs. Failed. 
It's one of the only empires I ever feel really bad about destroying. The mad robots. With their ancient chambers. They're trying so hard to be good. And sure, they are completely broken down, but I love them all the same. So what we're going to do with these then... Uh, probably going to make most of them tech-based, I imagine. Research ring worlds. I mean, this one's going to have to stay as it is, but... Um, yeah, I think I'm going to make them all research. We have a lot of worlds now which are completely full, and they're sending their populations to other worlds, so it won't take long for these to fill up as well. For now, I'll leave it as a trade. I'll grab those anyway, but I'll leave this mostly as trade for now. Is there a trade world? Yep, commercial ring world, plus 20% trade value of all these merchants. That's going to be a lot of energy once this is fully um, stocked. Need a new gateway around here. So I don't really want this station. Oh, there must be a gateway close enough. It's grabbing its trade value. Fantastic. Oh, probably this wormhole? No. Where did I build a gateway close by? I have no idea how I'm getting the trade value, but apparently I am. I'm not going to question it. Federation's end. There's a star base here around a black hole where most of the forces of this empire is. Well, that's interesting. What a weird system. Yeah, two broken worlds. Two star bases. Two different species. That is so bizarre. At least I know what all their forces are at the moment. Yeah, okay. So, we're actually going to go to war with the Coalition next. I'm going to make a war to put them as our vassal. Because they'll be a lot easier than just taking everything. And then we can integrate them later. I'm currently integrating the Union. That should finish soon. And then I'll start integrating the Authority. So that will be the one after that. The rest I'll have to just go to normal war with because in integrating does take at least 10 years depending on the size of the empire. So two or three of them, that's fine. All of them, that will take until the heat death of the galaxy. Sorry, Infinity Machine. But thank you very much for the influence. So once we have this system, we'll have access to their gateway as well, so we can jump our forces directly in. Uh, they jump most of their forces to this gateway. I've put my fleets there. I have loads of fleets there. I don't think they quite know where to move. So, yeah, I think I've blocked them off successfully. A second fleet is also moving in, so we're just going to keep them blocked off whilst these fleets start doing their work. I'm also about to take out the Devourer over here, which will be nice. Should happen in just a moment. Did they just swap positions and not actually fight? Please take out that small fleet before it starts causing damage. That would be great. The Stellar Devourer. Vessel production capacity violently diminished. Ooh, an egg sack. Study the corpse or retrieve the egg sack. I mean, the parades have been really interesting so far, so I'm going to go with that. And of course, encourage it. Something new. The observation probes we have left behind at the site of the Stellar Devourer's final demise report that portions of the body have started to merge back together into the star. The energy seems to have increased stellar activity, but with the removal of the egg sac, our calculations state it won't be enough to restore the system to its former luster. If we turn our transport ship back now, we could still potentially reignite the star. No, we're... Why to food again? Must every must every parade be held in the system I'm holding my livestock? Why not my capital? A bright day greeted the packed crowds on food as the procession carrying our proof of the destruction of the Stellar Devourer travelled through the planet's cities. The parade's progress was broadcast throughout our empire to billions of viewers. The Devourer's egg sack already seems to have become a staple of endless culture, inspiring artists and creators across the galaxy. Our finishing, say after finishing the world tour, the Devourer's egg sack was placed in a specialised display at the centre of the capital to inspire generations to come. Yeah, see, it 
really thinks that food is the... I guess because this was the other Empire's capital, it's treating it as a capital world. Which is really a... Well, excuse me? Allows us to conduct Operation Consume Star. It, uh, what now? Operation Consume Star. What does that even mean? Is that like a espionage thing? Consume Star. Infest the capital star with stellar devourers, which slowly consumes the star. Okay, sect, I'm not going to go to war with you for a while. Challenging. How's it challenging? My tech's amazing at the moment. Was that just not got that tech? Okay, well, send in our spies anyway. Consume star. I mean, that's just awesome. Do we have an edict to help this out? Oh, wow. Oh, so yeah, we don't even map the stars anymore. Uh, do we have one? Encryption plus one. No, it's the opposite. There we are. The Bureau of Espionage. One extra envoy plus two code breaking. Yep, there we go. Let's activate that. Soon we'll have to uh, lay back a bit on Unity. We're currently spending a lot, but we have load stockpiles. It's not a big deal. There we go. So we have three spies now. We can consume stars. I mean, that's just awesome. This war is taking a long time, but on the upside, I uplifted one of the primitive species I had, so I had enough influence to make a claim over here because... There's a science nexus, which is already being built. So we're going to have two science nexus after this. I've also made a claim long ago on the home world, so we're also going to grab this world as well. So that way we can have a gateway already in the sector for when the endgame crisis arrives. So we can teleport pretty much anywhere except for the very top left and the very bottom left. In fact, actually no, most of the left section is still off to us. Yeah, we really do need to start taking out these smaller empires. But the longer this war takes, the more of their worlds I destroy, of the less I have to terraform later. And I have already made a big go at using the detox to turn a lot of the toxic worlds into tomb worlds. I think I've already done that to at least 20 at this point. Nope, wrong one. But there's still so many more to go. Is there a way to terraform them from here. I really wish there was. Yeah, we have grabbed a lot more space now. There's just lots of them to go. Yeah, sadly, Toxic can't go straight into Tomb, so they will take a very long time. Can Baron go straight to Tomb? Yes, they can. As you can see, a lot of them I have already started with. It just takes a very long time. Okay, that is every world in our borders now terraforming to at least some degree. Next up, the kingdom shall fall. Oh, in addition to their tiny little minion who has closed borders of everyone, so that really doesn't matter. Oh, they've apparently pledged loyalty to us. I don't care. We have declared war to seek out our interests. So this time it's total war, which means we're going to obliterate everything we touch. That also means the enemy does the exact same. We have gateways everywhere, so this is when this type of war is really efficient, because getting back to defend, in case they do have some way past, will be incredibly easy. We also have a lot of backup fleets here right next to gateways, so we should be absolutely fine. I've been saying that a lot today, and I always mean it. More of the truth, Sayer. What on earth was more of the truth, Sayer? Um, maybe this... Ooh, Baron Worlds. Well, we definitely want that. Maybe this is where the Shroud Witches were at one point before we, you know, made that less of a thing. Wow, Toxic Worlds, Baron World. Okay, yeah, we really need this system as soon as possible, please. Seize the planet. Sphere. So apparently they do have one way in this wormhole down here, which I never explored because it wasn't in my territory until, well, I grabbed this empire. Apparently it goes somewhere into their territory. I'm not quite sure where, though. Ah, maybe there. 
One more science nexus is about to be ours. And weirdly, they're also building another science nexus over here. They have the site already up and running and making the next stage. I'm not quite sure what that is. Maybe the kingdom managed to steal one at some point. Or perhaps that was a ruined one that got repaired? Either way, more science next time. More power. Um... So I just destroyed a lot of the spice whales, which has made people very upset with me. Is that meant to happen? Is there meant to be a death world there? Just made of corpses? I didn't even know I had some uh, mercenaries. Well, that's... Definitely a thing. Can confirm is a thing. Ground invasion force has ceased. Now attacking the home system. So I think you all might have just been a brand new system. The home system has been scoured. Yeah, this time... Nothing new. No random world made of just corpses. I think. So that's Tiana Vec. And the other one is called... Tian Fort? I feel like that's almost a joke. I don't know how to pronounce it, but maybe there's a joke there I'm missing. Or a reference, more likely. That is such a bizarre thing. These look more like the Matriarchs. Yeah, now I'm actually looking at them. I think they're the Matriarchs. Kind of model. Interesting. Yeah, it's just whole tissue and everything else. Nothing too special there. Hmm. Very confused about that, honestly. A strongly worded letter. Execute them. Letter. There were T's meant to be in that word. Progress. The sheer amount of undead I'm having to destroy. Xenomorphs versus the undead. That's well, certainly a thing. But I think this is their final world now. Spending all the influence I have currently just grabbing every single system I can. There are so many systems to purchase. That is the main downside to this particular type of war. You don't get the systems given to you, so you have to buy them afterwards. So after this, we're going to clear up the Combine and the Link. That way, most of the galaxy is then accessible to us when the crisis arrives. Only this very middle section isn't. In fact, most of the galaxy will be us. After a very, very long time, the kingdom has finally fell. We are now officially in endgame crisis territory now, so the endgame crisis can spawn in at pretty much any point. So I am a little bit concerned. So, yeah, the combine really needs to go down as soon as possible. Let's get all our fleets amassed over there. Oh, there's not really many points I can escape, is there? There's no wormholes in the territory. Yeah, this will be a lot faster than that war. So obliterate both of those. Then obliterate the Theocracy. Then we go after the Federation group. All the while, my construction vessels are grabbing every star base possible. I do have three construction vessels all doing the automatic construction. But there are so many mining stations to build. Turns out they had all their forces over here without me really realising it. So that was a little bit silly. Thankfully, this is why we have gateways everywhere. It took me only a few seconds to write that wrong. So, yeah, we're obliterating all that. We've already pushed into this little bit of territory here. Goodbye. And we have enough ground forces. We can take pretty much everything we want pretty much instantly. Pretty much. In fact, you I want you to get back over there. No, stay where you are. Let's take out these sections first. Let's actually free ourselves of this menace. Okay. 
So their origin was indeed the ring world and master conduit here. Hasn't ever been upgraded. We just have normal trade districts rather than the special one, which is actually really good. It's one merchant, one of our consumer goods producers, and a clerk per one. So 24 merchants. This is going to be a truly lovely system for trade value. Not that I need that too much. I'm trying to focus on making my navy capacity a bit more reasonable. So lots of our worlds now have lots of soldiers on them to increase our navy capacity. And we're going to continue that as we go forwards. Also finally building up enough of our um, smaller stations. Some anchorages here and there. This is their final world. We have two fleets about to get there, along with some ground forces, so that's not going to last more than just a few moments. First part of the war is pretty much done, then the link, and annoyingly, uh, this group has joined the Federation with the others. I guess we are, you know, a big enough threat to force any groups together, but even with the Empires combined, they, they aren't bigger than things like the Coalition over here, so, yeah. It's all pretty much done. Just need to make sure that all of our worlds are being converted as soon as possible, because they do take a very, 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 very long time. Okay, well, I was kind of waiting for our current event to finish, and by the way, th this does mean I now have six Science Nexi. Uh, science Nexus? Science Nexuses? Science Nexus? Six Science Nexus. Six Science... Six Science Nexi. Multiple Science Nexus. Let's go with that. Anyway, but before I could have this event fully happen, which, yeah, it's still taking a long time since I don't have a, uh, a minion to do the job, we're about to be attacked. Subspace Echoes. So we've actually got incredibly lucky here. I mean, beyond lucky. This is perfect for us. Really, anything but the Unbidden I would have been happy with, and even the Unbidden wouldn't be too bad. All I need to do is swap over the Arc Emitters for the Tachyon Lances and swap over the Cloud Lightnings for the Neutron Launchers. I then need multiple types of battleship, one with the Strike Craft to counter the enemy's missiles, etc. And then one type which is just going to use all of these. Now, we're definitely going to want more of these than the Strike Craft version, so I'm going to turn my craft into this. I'm also going to stop the speed up now, finally. So there we go, that'll be the final design. And then a new battleship design, which I'll make sure to make before upgrading the others. Which will be... Uh, actually, no, all of them I want to have the Tachyon Lance, even the Hangers. So yeah, let's go like this. So these ones will be able to deal with enemy's missiles. And most importantly, the enemy's strike craft. Because on the, fully, on the full difficulty version, their strike craft will just rip apart your ships very, very, very quickly. Artillery, once again the armor. Armor is better than the shields versus the scourge, so fantastic that we've got the dragon scale armor, which is the first time getting this in. I don't even remember the last time I got this. Okay, make sure you're both in artillery mode. Okay, so actually what I can do is yeah, set them all up to upgrade and then I'll use my original star base to start producing some of the others. We need some dark matter, thankfully of course. Our economy is still fantastic. We can start selling more stuff as well. Gonna need more alloys than that. Not making anything, are we? No, okay. Wow, the lag there because we're selecting so many at once. Let's just upgrade the first few. And over there, we'll start making some fleets of the Strikecraft variants. Okay, I think we'll be... Honestly, absolutely fine. We could do what I love doing, which is turn the Scourge into a pet, keeping them in one or two systems. But we'll see. The problem is I don't want the Tomb Worlds. Why are they not grabbing the system? Oh, no, because they're my vassal now. Yeah, I am absorbing them as well, so soon enough, that'll be a thing. Okay, I'll be back once the Scourge spawn in. This really shouldn't be too much of an issue. It's a new day of recording, which means, naturally, I wasn't using my recording software for at least the last half an hour. Now, thankfully, not all that much happened outside of me grabbing some more worlds, sorting out terraforming stuff, and now the breach point's here. This is where the Scourge is going to land, so I'm going to use this gateway to get my forces over to this system, and then we'll, e we'll enter there and try to attack them. We do have Defender of the Galaxy, and although only a fraction of our fleets have been updated, we still should be alright just because of the sheer power of our forces, and the fact that Cloud Lightning isn't the worst thing against the Scourge. But it would have been nice if I had the full upgrades. So we're going to have lots of Strikecraft. 
all new ships will be outfitted properly. And we still have a lot of them changed, at least, just not all of them. <laughs> see? Some of them are as they should be. Star system we'll see how this goes. In the meantime, we have a shard to destroy. There we go. So now we also have the rubricator. Which I definitely want to use on cooldown because the use cryo core is pretty useless to us, but the artifacts are fantastic. Giving us these chunks of research is always good. And we also now have an event. Parade on Alpha Complex. Yep, that's another one of the homeworlds. It's the one over here. But never our homeworld, annoyingly. Okay, you can go and join the rest of the fleet. Station under attack. Attacking enemy vessels. My god, that was a crisis fleet that just vanished. Yeah, I do have a ridiculous navy. That's true. So much so it's lagging out the game every time I select it. But this time I actually have tech, unlike the last full playthrough. Station under attack. Beautiful. Okay, uh, in that case we can be a lot more aggressive. Probably multiple fleets at once can be taken out, so... Let's encircle them and destroy them. I'm going to take out everything that's... Yeah, I'm going to go back and destroy everything I've got here. Then I'll go and chase down the rest. Well, that was a mistake. Uh, kind of just went straight into them there, but yep, strike craft. Our armor as well is doing wonderful things. Well, we waited the 60 days and everything else, but uh, nothing really happened. I feel like it's just, it's going to slowly affect them. And that's it. The Scourge were defeated. I think. I mean, there's none of them left. I'm not getting the event. Does Wave 2 still happen these days if you don't, even if you do destroy the initial group? How's the pirates? Oh, in this weird bit over here. Well, yeah, that makes sense. The star is infested, the main star that is, and soon we should start seeing events happen within the system. They apparently are, are now getting the event star dimming, or something similar to that, so hopefully other things will happen as it slowly goes out. Now they do have a little brown dwarf here as well, so I wonder how it's all going to work. Hopefully we'll see that soon. Yeah, so right now, we're just waiting for... Yep, the second wave did happen anyway. Apparently, even if you destroy the scouts, the second wave now arrives regardless. I feel like that changed a while ago, but I did kind of completely forget about it. So it's now just going to be a matter of picking them off one fleet at a time. They don't really reproduce all that fast, so we can take our time and um, try and be smart about it, but it will take a while. Station under attack. So we are going to take a couple of losses per fight, but not too bad. I mean, how many battleships were just lost then? Like, less than ten, yes. Yeah, so that's absolutely reasonable. Plus, we are producing more in the background, which are the actual correct builds now. So, any fleets I make now are going to be stronger than the fleets currently here. At least stronger versus the skirt. Ooh, there's apparently a fleet still present in the system. Hello, I did not see you. That didn't go as well. Still fine. Still fine. That's two big fleets dealt with. That's two fleets gone. That's a big deal. That's a moderately big deal. It is a medium level of deal. Well, there's two. No, there's one there. They've all gone the other Okay, yeah, they've all gone the other way. That's terrifying. Uh, so I guess I'll just try and ambush this one. They'll try and take these systems back. And I'll just keep on... Every time I see a single or a double fleet in a system, I'll go for it. And I'll be making more and more ships in the background. Finally thought to myself, you know what you should do? Find military applications using the artifacts. You have almost unlimited artifacts now. So now we're doing plus 10% damage to armor, which is 
obviously fantastic against enemies made almost primarily of just armor. Okay, I'm gonna go, do, go and do this. Make sure to take out all of the enemies this time. Clean them all out. I don't want them to have construction vessels and constantly make new stations. Oh, there's so many of them. There's like another 10 fleets left plus. Messed up a little bit there. Kind of went headlong into the fleets. Again, in the same place. What's with this system and suddenly my brain going, huh, <laughs> everything hit each other and then just turning off. Ooh, they've landed on that world. Don't want that to be allowed any longer, thank you. I don't think they really leave much of a holding army. No, they don't. Um, but I don't want them to kill everyone because then this world goes from a beautiful tomb world to an infested world, which is like the literal opposite of what we want. Life everywhere. Disgusting, disgusting life. This may be backing us into a corner, but it takes out their last construction vessel, and then we have a good shot at this one. Yeah. Attacking enemy vessels. This time was a bit more on purpose. It's our one chance to hit them while they're separated. Now we go after the station. Attacking enemy assets. Then it begs the question: Do I just go for both of these? We are clearly destroying them. I think I'm going to just let it go. Let's see what happens. Please strike craft focus on one fleet at a time and just obliterate them. Yep, we're going to have some losses today. But that was two fleets eradicated at once. Oh yeah, some of our fleets are looking a little bit more. Well, that's a single battleship on its own. You survived. All of your friends are dead. Expanded. Oh, is that it? Yeah, that's the last of their forces. I think they have one world. Yeah, so one infested world, which we will bombard the second I've destroyed those other forces. Construction complete. Oh, well, I was wondering why all those suddenly happened at once, because that's when I got this section to ourselves. Wow, it's a lot of Tomb Worlds. It's going to be 20 years until the Coalition is fully absorbed into our Empire, and then every single one of their worlds can be converted. And in the meantime, I'm going to attack the Link and the Sect and everything else. All we need to do is wait until we fully bombard this world, which thankfully we do have Armageddon bombardment, so it shouldn't take too long. Oh. So the Consume Star thing has fully ran its course. Belm A is now a brown dwarf. All of the worlds are now barren wastelands. Even the habitats have been completely ruined. I don't know if these barren worlds are going to be um, terraformable, but yep. That was a very, very cool event. Destroyed their home system. If you can get that earlier in the game going after the Stellar Devourer, that could be game-changing. One strong empire and just obliterate its home system if they don't react properly, which who knows with the AI. That's going to be glorious. Now, in preparation for attacking the last empires, I'm making some of these lovely Doom Fleets, which are just the menacing corvettes. Incredibly quick and able to react a lot faster than our battleships. Yeah, the fleets without strike craft aren't going to do that well head on, but we just have so much overwhelming power at this point, it doesn't really matter that much. Apparently there was just like one construction vessel or something hiding out in the system. We've just finally got the end of the scourge. Doesn't really do anything for us, but we did it. Okay, I was a little bit worried there, but yep, to confirm, you can turn relic worlds into tomb worlds just like every other. You can't terraform them, but you can certainly bombard them, which is what we'll have to do to the Rubricator world in our own territory at some point. Ground invasion force has seized a planet. There we go! So that is all hostile empires now removed from the game. All we have left is the Coalition, which are still being absorbed. It's just taking a very long time, so I have 80 months left. 
which is kind of crazy. But at least now I can go to the L gate. I've also built a sensor array. I don't think we have that system just outside the galaxy we found last time. We have only the final stage now of the sentry, the sentry array. Then that's done. My voice is breaking a little bit now. And yeah. So does the L gate. Um, only certain events will allow us to terraform the worlds in the L gate. So I'm kind of hoping that'll happen because it just means more tomb worlds overall. But it all depends on the events. Okay, so it's the L Drakes this time. Oh, I can't. They're too cute. Maybe later. We'll see how evil we really want to be. Okay, send the science vessel through and everything else. Uh, but this does mean, however, I can't terraform the worlds. Oh, wait, no. They won't be... No, yeah, they are nanite worlds. And sadly, we won't have the tech in order to terraform them. So we can't do that. Which is a shame. Okay, so we made a vassal and then released them. Really should have done that earlier. I don't think you can do that during times of war, though. So, yeah, this is our... Well, was our vassal. As soon as the peace has faded in ten years' time, I will bombard the two worlds, turning them both into tomb worlds. Of course, most importantly, this relic world. There is no empire but us and our two soon-to-be-destroyed vassals, since there was one more tomb world, annoyingly. And now every other world is going to be converted into a tomb which will take a while. Yeah, Gaia will take that long, and that's if you're using the terraforming gases, which we are, which speed up terraforming. It just takes a very, very long time. So it's pretty much now just a waiting game. I even found the primitive world, which I have no idea how I missed. Colonization in progress. That's now a tomb world. Lovely. The last world there being destroyed. If we take a look-see, there's only a few left now. This one barren world. Colonization in progress. Apparently we won. I decided to play for another half an hour just to make sure everything was ours. We now have every single system and I have double checked over and over again. Every single one of our worlds is now a tomb world with no exceptions. There's no relic world or anything like that. Every single world which could be converted in the galaxy has been converted. That is to say, hundreds of worlds are now tombed and the galaxy itself is one giant graveyard for the organics we have so happily destroyed. I just noticed there was one system we hadn't yet claimed, so of course, we've just grabbed that. This full playthrough was an absolute joy to record. It did turn out to be one of the most high effort ones, micromanaging all the worlds, sorting out the toxic worlds and the barren worlds, and terraforming everything was a very time consuming and very attention consuming effort, but it was really, really fun. And now we have one of the cleanest galaxies of all time. Just lovely, lovely rocks. Now the next full playthrough will be using the new origin, the overclocking origin, and it will be a very meta build versus all three of the end game crises. That is to say, though, there may be a little bit of a delay between now and the next full playthrough because I am moving house. Over the next month, we should be fully moved in and then back to normal, but obviously there's a lot of chaos going on with sorting all out. This was sprung on us kind of last minute due to a change in our current living uh, situation, so sorry if things get a little bit garbled for a while. My attention span is bad at the best of times, and now I'm sorting out a hundred different things in the background. Still, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Sure, nope, nope, Stellaris. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye.